My name is Jochen Kruse and I am an artist and I came to this area, East Gippsland area, with my family in 1975. I always have liked drawing and painting as far as I can remember and I have done this all through my life. I like nature very much. I like the wild animals. Com University, uh, I understand as a very unbureaucratic way of teaching something and learning something from the word communi community has the word community in it so it's actually members of the float community are teaching other members of the float community my name's phil horner i've been living uh, at lakes entrance for the last two years and i've been involved with float for the last bit over 12 months my main interest is nature I've been coming to East Gippsland most of my life. Had holidays here as a child, so it's in my str in my blood, in my spirit, East Gippsland. So this is my spiritual home. And getting to know Lake Tyres more frequently, more intimately, I just love it. It's I love the uh, the little the little bays and and the, the close proximity of the bush. Um, I'm enjoying photography as well. I love taking photos of, of nature, mainly. Mainly landscapes, the textures, the shapes, the colours of nature. Um, and I enjoy meeting people and sharing information. I'm delighted to see an active arts community that's um, sensitive to the environment and keen to um, project environmental values in their art. My name is Josephine Jacoby and I've always been here. My great-grandmother selected property in this area on Lake Tyres um, to have bees uh, and make honey. I work in visual arts uh, and community and my art is always about ecology. I'm very interested in the ecology of the lake. Before we began the float project, I didn't really understand the role of art in community. Uh, but watching people gather around the project and become involved in the arts and learn about their own ability to make and to have a language through art, I see that uh, making art is a way of communicating and bringing community together. What I have learned that building trust in a group is extremely important. The knowledge that we support each other and that there is a high degree of trust within the group makes many things possible. I think I learn, I learn a lot about the people through that, through the trust and the friendship, but also through the art, I learn about the ecology and the layers that are within that. And the importance of the interdependency of all the creatures on each other, that nothing lives in isolation. As the same as us in the community, really, we don't live in a community in isolation. Each of us are connected to the other. We are an ecology of artists. Uh, my name's Marlene Rees. I'm a textile artist here at Lake Tyres. I was born at Lake Tyres and uh, the Aboriginal name for Lake Tyres is Bangyana. I like creating with, with fabric and colour. I enjoy people um, socialising. I enjoy learning new techniques from other people and I've had the privilege of doing that through the university. Um, I've learned how to do felting, I've learned how to do drawing and I've been able to incorporate these new techniques into my work. Coming back here to Lake Tyres and being accepted as an artist has given me some unique opportunities. I've 
um, had two fashion parades. One was down here beside the lake and as a result of that I've been able to sell some of my work. Uh, I also have had the um, opportunity to set up my own website which I had never dreamt of anything like that ever happening. My name's Lycan Kelp. I'm a, an artist and a curator. So I have a practice which I call performance chemistry and now on float. It's completely unique because I've never done a residency um, on a floating studio before. Um, to be right in the middle of a huge body of water is just so special. I think everybody you know, wants to experience that at some point, just waking up with views of the water and patterns happening in the ripples on the lake or the movement of the birds or the way the fish behave differently each day. It's just really nice to slow down to that, to that point where you really sort of feel so much more connected to nature. So over the last few years I've been really wanting to concentrate my own travel and my own residencies in Australia more because Australia has so much to offer and Australians are often sort of chasing this experience overseas to, to feel like they've really absorbed something different and unique but I think we have that within Australia and so meeting people down here who are working closely with the land and um, you know environmental activists and things like that has been yeah really educational and interesting for me because that's sort of what I'm starting to focus more and more on is um, environmental art based practice and yeah sort of sustainable travel and a responsibility to to community and to land. Uh, my name's Frank Flynn. My wife and I were both born in East Gippsland, 100 odd k's to the north of here. Went to Melbourne, lived there. We ran away from Melbourne, ran away from the big smoke. I love the plants of East Gippsland. That's my my sort of first passion. So I spend a hell of a lot of time photograph, photographing it and um, poking around the bush just looking to see what's growing. But I've got a garden, I love my garden, I like growing my veggies, I like growing local plants from East Gippsland, I like growing plants from all over Australia. Float was one of those things that the way it's evolved, it, it has evolved organically. So it's been great just to meet um, people with an interest in the area, an interest in politics and also the arts and to meet some pretty fabulous artists and to learn from them the sort of an artist's perspective to life I suppose because I've never considered myself the least bit artistic in in my life but I've always loved photography and I've re loved viewing art but I'd really had nothing to do with um, people who practiced art as such so with float I've learned from people to watch, watch the way they work the way they think the way they um, explain what they're doing has just been fabulous and it's been great for me to be able to put my knowledge and expertise of the area back into people so that they can understand a little bit about the natural world here. My name is Karen Murdoch. I'm 64 years old and retired now. I've been living in Lake Tyres Beach for 15 years. I live with my husband Ken and two children, Kobe 13 and Alyssa 10. There's so many people that I've met, but knowledgeable people, and I've learnt so much about my area, but not just the float project looks at things deeper. It's like learning that there's more to everything than, than just what's in the surface. So it's joy of life for what is deeper, the detail. You learn more about the detail, and there's so many people that have different uh, strengths that can tell you more about that detail and that becomes your passion, learning about the detail and things like that. I got second prize for the Perkin exhibition and I always tell everybody uh, I can't make things, I can't do anything and I've never won a prize in anything and I thought I need to have a go so I'm an example for the children and the excitement that I got when I won was telling everybody and everything, but it just proved that you need to have a go and just do it. And that it 
was so just something I enjoyed doing and yet it won a prize so it just goes to show. I'm Sally Avery this is Cookie I came to this area in 1976 drove down into Mitang and saw the beautiful yachts and the water and the village and thought this is the most beautiful place on earth I'm coming to live here and I did. For me a university is starting to understand other people's ideas and beliefs and giving value to beliefs that you've never thought about before. I understood through community art that we all have our own truth and there's no one truth because we can all draw a landscape and our idea of a, a subject of art and everybody will be different because our own truth is that exactly our own truth not the truth which I used to think was all there was I think a stillness that when you're part of this float project there you go out on a boat you're with other people but there can be a time on the water where you're very still and quiet and just enjoying nature and being with other people but not necessarily speaking but communicating just in a, a physical sense in that we're enjoying nature together. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, Gary Yellen. I live at Lake Tyres and did a residency for five weeks on the float boat. The experience over the five week period was a unique experience. For me the painting had a lot to do with the feeling while I was on there not just experiencing and looking and painting what I see, but also painting what I feel. And uh, I think uh, for anybody who gets the chance to do this, uh, you will find a similar way of uh, maybe expressing yourself, but also a way to see how you fit into the environment and how you can sustain that. It's not all about uh, what you see or what you feel, but it's about being part of the world we live in, being part of that nature and environment, and how to be wanting to keep that and sustain that. And to dream a little, it's a good place to be alone and to dream. My name is Leanne Flaherty. I uh, first came across Lake Tyres back in the early 1990s and it was a chance for our family to have a lifestyle change. Through the float project I've learnt how a group of diverse people can get together and share ideas and collaborate on a, an individual project. I've learnt that um, the local community have lots of uh, different skills and eager to share them. I think that this project has brought a togetherness, um, um, have brought people that normally wouldn't communicate with one another or, or talk to one another or share food with one another, actually um, have created an environment where that is done on a weekly basis and uh, that I think is the magic of the whole project. My name's Sue Fraser, uh, I grew up in the area on a farm, um, always came down to Lake Tyres for swimming. So when I retired from business in Melbourne we decided to make our home here. Since I joined Float, um, because I can't do a lot of the physical things they like to do, I do like to see their photos when they're walking and they are canoeing. Uh, I support them with food, I support them with fundraising, Easter raffle, that sort of thing. Um, I make preserves, sell them, and I think I'm nearly up to $1,000. I take interest in the artists, sometimes I've written poems about the artists that come, two or three I think now. I think the memory of the day we had the Aboriginal 
local Aboriginal people doing what did they do? They did their dance, they welcomed to country, a smoking. Auntie Phyllis spoke without a script about her childhood here. And I think that's the thing I found most moving on that particular day is that she spoke without a script about her childhood, about growing up on the lake. And in a lot of ways it dovetailed with our life on the farm. Very simple, no money, uh, walking long way to school and uh, yeah, I think the, the attachment with the local Aboriginal people, the Gurnakurno people, is something that I really value. I'm Helen Sheel and um, for a time I lived on the Now Now Gorge. We owned a quirky caravan park, um, attracted there because of the wonderful arts community through the Now Now Nudes. My involvement is collecting stories of this area, providing a space for untold stories to be shared publicly and to track the impact of those stories. And that has been profound. We've been doing that now for six years. So we began in a very small way to raise awareness of this beautiful catchment, um, but also its vul vulnerability. We began that six years ago. And we were very small until the float community came to those gatherings and then all of a sudden we were on the map. I've always known that within each community people hold valuable knowledge of the past and they observe what goes on in their area, they know the relationships, they know the histories. And in this particular community it's a contested history with our Aboriginal community being um, part of this landscape and so it has a richness to this area that um, we've begun to learn about through our time with Float. I'm Yvonne Renfrey and my husband and I moved here 23 years ago and built a house overlooking the ocean, uh, look, overlooking Bass Strait. I do artwork inspired by those places. So I do silk painting and felting and uh, take some classes to share what I know. I first heard of Float uh, when it first started and I thought it was a wonderful idea to have the artists in residence. But since then it's really grown enormously to include classes. We're now having every Tuesday afternoon some people, any people can come and learn and watch other makers and discuss art and their practice and it's gone to Onionta and the community garden. I love the way the float has brought a lot of the community together, people I haven't known. They've lived in Lake Tyres for, for a long time and the Tavern Tuesdays have been a wonderful way of getting to know people and getting to know what they do. I'm Bill Payne, um, I'm a carpenter and um, yeah, I'm a bit of a passionate painter in the last few years. I've had a passion about fishing um, for many, many, many years. Um, I do a lot of fishing whenever I can. Um, this has led on to me actually painting fish it's a skill that I, uh, um, I first uh, blossomed before I was involved in float, um, but I kept it to myself and it was the float people and the community that actually brought that out and actually encouraged me to go on with that. I've actually come out of my skin. Um, we actually know nearly everybody in the community now. We've, we've been going to Lake Tyres for over 20 years and now in the last five, three, four or five years, we've got to know pretty well everybody in the community. It's just amazing. Um, so I think that that's one of the, the main things for me is the community interaction. I've, I've really, really enjoyed that. My name is Robin Colfard. I'm a Gippslander. I grew up on dairy farms, mostly in central and south Gippsland. And I have been coming to the Gippsland Lakes and Lake Tyres for most of my life. The thing that I'm probably the most interested in is people and the float project is almost the embodiment of community development theory which is really interesting to see that something starts 
with a particular purpose and it gains a life of its own because of the people who become involved. So for me, I have not a creative bone in my body, but I'm really practical and can help in many, many other ways, whether it's cooking, cleaning, um, supporting, suggesting, turning up, raising money, all sorts of other ways. And it's been very inclusive. Everybody is welcome. And that's probably the most significant thing for me is the warmth and the welcome and the inclusiveness of, of the group. And the community will grow and develop and change and it won't always be about art, it won't always be about environment, it'll be about all sorts of things at different times depending on the people who are there. That can't really be steered or managed or curated. The people will come and go based on their ability to be involved.